Hello coders, this is Jared from Renaissance Coders, and today we're going to delve into the enhancements made between the old version of Concrete 5 and the newest version available. Currently, the latest version of Concrete 5 is version 5.7.3.1, but we are not really concerned with smaller updates in this video, so we're just going to cover the, the major differences between 5.6 and 5.7. Okay, the title of this channel is Renaissance Coders, so let's cover the major changes that Concrete 5 made to their code base. Don't worry, we're going to get into some interface updates towards the end of the video and also some basic tasks as well. So, according to the Concrete 5 team, the core JavaScript and CSS has been completely rewritten and modernized. And they have started to convert their code base to the PSR-2 standard. What the heck is the PSR-2 standard, you ask? Well, the PSR-2 standard is a coding style guide for PHP. I will leave a link to a page detailing the PSR-2 styling guide if you want to take a look at it. There are a lot of coding styling guides out there. Some people choose to adopt them, others don't. It's really a personal choice for each developer to make for themselves. So don't think that you have to start writing all of your PHP code by these standards. My advice would be to do what works best for you. If you read through the guide and think, man, this is awesome, this Jared guy doesn't know what he's talking about, then that's cool. Personally, I already use some of these rules, but others are a little ridiculous in my opinion. I will say, though, that if you are building a package for Concrete 5 that's going to do a lot of core manipulation and things like that, then you will probably have to adopt more of the PSR-2 styling guide because they're going to really be looking at those styling guides at that point. But for a basic image slider, um, I probably will not be totally adopting the PSR-2 styling guide. Um, unless they say you can no longer put packages and blocks and things like that on the C5 um, you know, marketplace unless they have totally adopted the style. I don't see them doing that. But hey, okay, sorry about that rant. Let's get back to uh, what, what we're here to do today. Okay, so the sitemap in Concrete 5 is currently using the Dynatree jQuery plugin, but they will be moving to FancyTree in the future because FancyTree is replacing Dynatree. One more important note on the code side is that the page list, file list, and user list classes have been completely refactored, and according to the C5 team, these classes should be a lot easier to extend with these latest enhancements. Now let's move on to the architecture architecture side of C5. A big note here is that Zend Cache has been replaced with a more flexible cache layer. C5 now also supports IPv6 or Internet Protocol version 6 and C5's third-party libraries are all delivered by Composer which is a tool used for dependency management in PHP. The Laravel PHP framework is being used to power the new file-based configuration. Symfony 2 is being used as an event dispatcher component, and Doctrine is being used for database access in Concrete 5. Okay, so let's move on and talk about some of the other updates that Concrete 5 has made. One big update that if you've already moved a site to um, the latest version that you have no will have noticed is that they have added an application directory. So I personally like the addition of the application directory because it cleans up the root directory of the site and adds a little more hierarchy. In the past, the root directory of the site was used for overrides, but now the overrides are handled through the application directory, which again, in my opinion, is just a little cleaner. The core directory is still in the same location, which is the concrete directory. Okay, so those are most of the updates that the developers will care about. There are a lot more if you guys want to go check out their site and sort of look at what they've been doing. Um, they continue to push out new updates to this, so um, be sure to check out concrete5.org for more updates. Okay, so now let's take a look at the new interface. Okay, so I've logged into a fairly fresh install of the, the latest version of Concrete 5, and we're just going to go through a few basic tasks and sort of cover some of the updates that, you know, you guys may have noticed, you may have not noticed. Some of this stuff is really obvious, though. But um, first of all, the, the, the Concrete 5 toolbar has got a 
fairly new look to it. Um, the gradient doesn't look like it's changed a lot. You've still got the Concrete 5 logo up here. Um, the edit buttons and composer, and there's an add a block button now. Um, and those are all icon based, you know, no text there. So that's, that's kind of cool. Um, if you're new to Concrete 5, then you may definitely be confused by this little section up here. Um, they've got a global search field up here, which is really cool and pretty powerful actually. Um, then you have your add a page button and your dashboard button. Um, both of these do exactly what you think they do. Um, they're really cool. Uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's kind of like with this new version, they just wanted to make everything fairly streamlined. One issue I've run into though, is if you want to add multiple pages really quickly, that can be fairly slow with using this button in the toolbar. Um, because essentially what happens is you click this button, you define the page that you want to create, and then it actually takes you to that page in composer mode. So if you're setting up a site and you're trying to do it really quickly, this has kind of slowed down, but I'm sure someone's going to release some sort of package to do, uh, you know, add multiple pages really quickly. Older versions of Concrete 5 had that, so. Um, all right, so let's take a look at some of the dashboard pages now. Um, as you've probably noticed, when you click on these icons up here, you get a slide out menu from the right. If you click on the icons on the left, it slides out from the left. Um, another really cool thing that they've done here is if you click on the sitemap page, the sitemap is an entire page into itself. And that was true for the older versions, but the sitemap page used to be sort of contained in a central, you know, div that, you know, wasn't very attractive, but, you know, this to me is way better from a design standpoint because you get a full page to work with. You can expand everything out and kind of look at everything, but it's really cool. And they've sort of, I think they've changed around some of these icons here and, and stuff like that. So they definitely did a really dis design heavy um, update. Yeah, one thing with the sitemap page still though is a lot of the functionality remains the same. You know, when you click on stuff, you still get this sort of, um, drop down kind of menu that you can click around on and, and, and go to different things. Um, the an, an interesting um, point is that they moved SEO to its own little tab. So now you can click on this and work on the SEO of a page. Um, so the, the properties are handled differently for each page and things like that. So um, that's cool. I, I definitely like that feature as well. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go back out to the website. So let's click on this back I icon up here. And this is going to take us back to the, the home page. And so what I want to do is I want to enter edit mode. And to do that, I just click on this pencil icon up here. And so when I click on the pencil icon, then the page is going to reload. And now we are in edit mode. So the first thing you're going to notice is that um, an older version of Concrete 5, um, you know, everything was surrounded, like each little block was surrounded with, you know, borders that, you know, were, was not very appealing, to be honest. Um, and they've sort of totally gone away from that to where now, you know, when you reload the page, you don't see those, um, borders on everything. You can still see if something is disabled in edit mode and that's going to be like image sliders, um, YouTube videos, things like that are, are going to be disabled in edit mode. Um, if you're using the, the YouTube block that is, um, you know, but for the most part, uh, you know, you won't see borders unless, unless you're hovering over a current block, um, which is again, really cool. I think this really helps users to see really what the page is gonna look like when you press that publish button, you know? Um, Cause you could still get some really weird uh, occurrences in the older versions. And I'm not saying this one's totally bug free yet, but um, it's pretty cool. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna edit some text on the page. And so first thing you may think is, okay, I'll just edit some text right here, right? Well, if you click on this and click edit block, it doesn't pop up as the regular content block anymore because this is what's called feature, a feature block. And this is really cool because you can define an icon, um, you know, and give it a title and then a paragraph here and you can link it, which is, which is cool. Um, you know, definitely really useful for, you know, the way a lot of website designs going. So that's, that's a lot of fun to play with. And they've got, a, again, just a ton of icons in here. Um, you know, that are really, really useful. So what I'm actually gonna do though is I'm not gonna play with that one. I'm gonna come down here and mess with this content block here. And so when clicking on that, you're gonna notice that you, it doesn't pop 
out anymore. Like there's not a pop-up. Literally, you can just edit the text immediately on the page. So I can just press enter right here. And now I'm literally just typing into the page, which is really, really cool. Um, you know, definitely helps to give the user that experience of um, contextual editing. Okay, so another really, really cool thing that they've re totally revamped is the editing HTML. HTML. Um, so to do that, you just click on this little code icon here, and we enter like HTML mode. And this is really, really cool. It's a lot better than how they used to have it. Um, you know, if they had autocomplete and sort of, you know, some of those things like other IDEs have in this, that would just be amazing. But I, I don't think that's coming anytime soon. So, um, you know, but this is this is a lot of fun to play with and mess around with. Uh, you know, a lot easier to keep your code um, looking sort of the same. So, and again, you know, since this is the content block, you can highlight stuff, you can change styles, you can do all sorts of stuff just you know through this menu here. Um, you know, another thing you can do is setting custom templates. We've already got a video on creating your own custom template, but one really custom, really one really cool custom template I just wanted to point out was um, the custom template for the feature block. If you change this to the hover description, and this is this is like really cool in my opinion. It changes to this layout, um, and again, that's just that's something that you know typically it's a jQuery plugin or you're defining that yourself, and the fact that they just sort of give you this immediately is really really cool. Um, and if I were out of edit mode and hovered on this, then, you know, the paragraph that was beneath this would, would show up. So, um, really cool stuff. Okay, if you're a hardened C5 vet, then you have probably noticed that there are not any clickable areas for adding a block. So in the past, what you would do is you would click like beneath this guy right here. There would be a little section that would say click here to add a block or something like that. And so you'd click and, you know, a, a menu would drop down and you click add block and then you choose the block you want to add. Well that's gone, okay? So now what you have to do is you have to go up here to this plus icon here and when you click on this you get the slide out menu from the left and all of the blocks are going to be listed over here in this menu. And it's really cool because I mean you can search for blocks, you can do drag and drop and notice that when I clicked on this plus icon that everything now is um, sort of surrounded by those borders, by those green borders and the blue borders represent global areas. So if I were to drop a block in a global area, that means it's gonna show up on every page that has that area. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go ahead and drag a block out so that way we can see what it looks like. So I'm gonna drag a content block out. And you can see when I'm dragging around, the border expands to show where that block is gonna go. So if I just drop it there, it's gonna load up, and now we're in our content section again. So this is a test, as always, save that out, and bam, it's on the page, right? Now that's not the prettiest way to do that, but you know, I just wanted to show you sort of how that works. Okay, so another change is the composer, which is the cog icon in the toolbar. So if I go up here and click on this little icon, sorry about that, I click on that icon, then it's gonna load and it's gonna slide out again, and this is what's considered to be the composer. Um, they say page settings up here, but you know, it's kind of the same thing, right? What we can do here is we can change the design of the page. We can add SEO, change the attributes, the caching, um, options, the permissions, you know, again, it's just sort of the old composer. Everything's put in here now. Um, and this is again, I think attempting to stream streamline single page editing. Um, you know, so once you get a site set up and running and, uh, you know, you're just adding one page after another, you know, it's going to be really, really easy, easy. The initial site setup is probably going to take longer in my opinion, because they focus so much on sort of single page development. Okay. So another thing I wanted to touch on is something that Concrete 5 has essentially just given you for free. Okay. Because this is open source, you know, you don't have to pay for it. Um, is the theme that you're looking at right now. And this is the elemental theme. You can see the title of the theme right up there. And this theme is freaking awesome. I mean, it's way better than any other theme that they've given 
out in the past. Um, you know, some of the other themes you could use, you know, but you had to modify drastically to get a certain look you were going for. But I honestly believe you can sort of plug and play this theme and it, it's going to work for you. I mean, because it really is that great. I mean, it, you know, totally responsive. Um, just a lot of options, a lot of things you can play with. And it's, it really sort of surprises me that, that they just gave this away because it's, it's way better than their previous themes. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and click on this and go ahead and show you that you can still add version comments. You can still save the changes, which is, which is essentially just like the preview in other versions or previous versions of Concrete 5. Um, so... You know, again, you, you know, you still get a lot of that same functionality. They've changed the verbiage on a lot of it, but a lot of it's still the same. So I'm just going to go ahead and discard my changes because we don't want this. To, this is a test printed out all over the place. OK, so I know what you're thinking, man, this looks awesome. Are there any drawbacks? Sadly, the answer to that question is yes. Okay, so the biggest issue that I have with the latest version of Concrete 5 is that you cannot update directly from 5.6 to 5.7. So basically, if you have a site that's running 5.6, you will have to manually move over the content to the new version, which can take a large amount of time depending on how large your site is. Um, I'm sure there's some scripting options and things you can do to export the content. Um, but again, you don't really know what the result's going to be from pulling it into a new site. Um, I know they used to have like a WordPress to Concrete 5 um, converter. And I'll be honest, that thing never worked well for me. But um, I'm sorry, developer, if you're watching this video. <laughs> um, okay, so... Here's another thing about you know their their decision and and it was a conscious decision that they that they made you know to not allow someone to automatically update from 5.6 to 5.7 and this is a major drawback to me personally because I do own my own company and I do um support several sites that are on 5.6 you know um I think I've got something like 20 websites running 5.6 right now and it's a total pain because I'm like, look at how cool this is, you know? Um, but how do I justify moving from 5.6 to 5.7? Because as a business, because as a business owner, you know, you can't just go out and update all of your clients' websites for free. And, you know, if it's running well in 5.6, then your customers are probably not going to want to move, you know? And so it's hard to justify that cost. And so, you know, there's definitely a drag um, to this new version. Um, but, you know, I understand why they made the decision. And, I mean, I'm definitely going to keep using 5.7. And, you know, if someone doesn't want to move to 5.7, that's cool. Um, you know, it's totally going to be their decision. Okay, guys, so that is going to do it for our review of the latest version of Concrete 5. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Drop us a like if you want and subscribe for more great tutorials. This wasn't really a tutorial. It's more of a review. It's definitely a review. I guess we did show you how to do some things if you've never used Concrete 5 before. But um, yeah, if you want to see more videos like this, then definitely drop us a like. As always, guys, thanks for watching. And this has been a Renaissance Coders tutorial. <laughs>